first, let's start by exploring how materials data is structured um, uh, across ANSYS Grant Selector and um, how you'd be able to navigate the core functionalities of the software. So here you can see the home screen of Grant Selector, which uh, showcases the different uh, databases that can be available um, in Selector. Um, what you probably have access to as a student team is the material universe and the jam curve data database because uh, these are uh, what we call core data and are always available in the software. The other databases uh, shown here are uh, what databases that are add-on uh, and can be added on top of this core data. If there is any need um, for your design process, uh, you can get in touch and um, essentially uh, have these databases added to the core data. Now, um, at the top of the uh, screen, we have the main toolbar, which houses the core functionalities of the software. If you're interested in um, finding information about specific materials, applications, uh, processes, you'd be able to use the browse and the search functionalities, and you can use chart select to create visual charts to compare materials and to run material selection projects. OK, so let's start by the browse functionality within the material universe database. So let's click on browse. As you can see here, we have information um, for ceramics and glasses, for fibers and particulates, hybrid materials, including composites and natural materials, liquids and gases, magnetic materials, metallic alloys and polymers. So let's imagine that we are interested in a uh, specific uh, composite uh, and we want to find more information about this material. Um, so if you go into the composites folder um, and uh, go into polymer matrix, uh, for example, um, we can see that there are different types of um, uh, polymer uh, matrix composites available here. Um, let's go into the epoxy folder. As you can see, there are different types of uh, fibers uh, or second phases that can be available. Uh, in this composite, I'll go into carbon fiber folder and uh, there are different options here. Uh, let's go into the unidirectional prepeg and there are different types of layups uh, for this composite. So let's go into unidirectional layup and if you double click on the label, uh, the data sheet for this uh, polymer matrix composite pops up, uh, which includes information about uh, designation of the material, uh, trade names that you'd be able to buy this on the market, uh, typical uses of the material, as well as a brief description of the composite. In this case, for example, we can see that the material family is composites, its base material uh, or matrix is epoxy resin, and it uh, can have between 65 to 70 percent um, by weight uh, fill essentially the fiber that is included there, which the material for the fiber is carbon um, and so on. We also have information about the price of the material, its density, mechanical properties of this composite are available, including Young's modulus, yield strength, Poisson ratio. If you're interested in finding out a bit more about any of these material attributes, you can click on the information icon next to each attribute. And by doing so, a design note pops up, which helps you when you're trying to, for example, find if a material would be suitable for a specific um, design or application, this brief uh, information can be helpful. If you find, if you want even uh, you know further information, there you can click on the science notes, uh, which uh, includes comprehensive information about, in this case, Young's modulus, uh, including how uh, a brief description, of course, how it can be calculated or measured, um, uh, the other material attributes that. Uh, are relevant to Young's modulus, as well as at the bottom of the page, uh, we have a uh, list of further reading where you can go into any of these textbooks and find information about Young's modulus. So a self uh, learning tool which is available in the software. If you scroll down, you can see that we have information about the 
impact properties, including fracture toughness, thermal properties, uh, including you know, um, melting points, uh, thermal conductivity, uh, thermal expansion, uh, electrical, magnetic, and optical properties of the material are available. Whether the material can be used in healthcare or food is mentioned. Um, if the material might be hazardous to health or environment is mentioned here, um, as well as uh, for polymers or polymer uh, uh, matrix composites, uh, we have absorption and permeability information. How well the material would be able to withstand different environments and more specifically, how will the material would be able to resist chemicals, uh, specific chemicals? So uh, these are, you know, dozens and dozens of uh, specific chemicals. And you can see, for example, for uh, specific alcohols or uh, acids or alkalis or oils, um, if the material uh, be able to resist this specific chemical. So let's scroll down. Um, we have information about environment mental attributes. Uh, so if that is uh, what is part of your design process, you'd be able to find um, embodied energy and CO2 footprint for the primary production of the material, as well as uh, processing it with different processes. At the bottom of the page, we have um, end of life attributes. So whether the material can be recycled or not, um, as well as uh, you know it can be put in the landfill, downcycled and so on. Um, at the bottom of each material data sheet, you'd be able to find links that would uh, take you to other parts of the software that have relevant information um, for uh, essentially this material. So, for example, if I click on the process universe link, uh, it would take me to all the processes that are compatible for shaping and surface treating of this uh, material matrix, uh, uh, polymer matrix composite. Um, so let's uh, open up composite forming, for example, uh, and go to the uh, manual layup uh, folder. And uh, if we click on hand layup, it would show me the uh, data sheet that we have for this manufacturing process, which includes a brief description of the process, a schematic of it, as well as the shapes that can be created um, using this process, physical attributes, including the tolerance and roughness that can be expected of the parts that have been created using uh, hand layup. Um, uh, we have some process char characteristics uh, as well as a cost model that would enable you to see for different batch sizes uh, what would be the cost of creating uh, a component using this process. The parameters used for the model are customizable, so uh, you can essentially change these values and the software would let you know how much it would be, uh, uh, how much it would cost to uh, use this process to manufacture a part. So, uh, so good self-learning tool to learn about the manufacturing side of um, uh, using a specific process. And at the bottom of the page, again, we have some design guidelines, technical notes, uh, typical uses of this process, and economic and environmental notes relevant to uh, this composite forming process. All right, so that's the typical structure of data uh, for different materials and processes in Grant to Selector, um, uh, and you can find that in the Browse section. Now, if you're interested in a specific, uh, you know, material or application or process, but are not sure how you'd be able to find that within the browse tree structure, you can directly search for it. So if I go to search and search for a chassis, for example, um, you can see all the different uh, parts of the software that have information about um, chassis. So um, let me open up the material universe folder, and these are the materials that mention the term chassis in their data sheet. So, uh, for example, if I go into the high strength, uh, low alloy steel, you'd be able to see that in the typical uses, um, chassis is mentioned. Um, and uh, any part of the data sheet that this term is mentioned, it is highlighted to let you know why you're looking at this data sheet when you search for a specific term. Okay, so 
the third functionality and the final one that I'm going to talk about at this point is the chart select. Um, so this is what you'd be able to use to create visual charts and run material selection projects for the material selection projects. I'm going to leave that um, for uh, you know the case study that you have for today, which is material selection for chassis. I'm going to create a visual chart to show you how that can be done within grant or selector. So let's click on chart index. And uh, so the first thing that we need to identify here is uh, what is it that we are trying to visualize? So if you go into uh, the select from, uh, there are different data uh, bases and data tables that are available in the software. I'm interested in looking into uh, and visualizing all the materials that are available within the material universe uh, database. So I'm gonna click on that data table. And you can see that we have uh, 4,224 materials available in this data table. Um, so in order to create a chart, we can click on chart index. Uh, the software asks us to fill in the Y axis and the X axis. Um, uh, in this case, I'm interested in you know, creating a chart with single material attributes for each axis. Um, for example, on the Y axis, I'm going to put the mechanical property of yield strength. So I'm going to choose mechanical property as the category and as attribute, I can find yield strength at the bottom of the drop down menu. You can you have the choice to use logarithmic or linear axes. I'm going to stick to logarithmic um, and for the X axis, I'm going to put the physical property of density, uh, so physical property as category and density as my attributes. And when you click on OK, the visual chart pops up with which you'd be able to compare all the materials available uh, in this data uh, database. So um, you have the option to um, essentially label each of these uh, bubbles, which is dedicated to a material available in the database by clicking and dragging. You can see that on the top right corner, we have um, osmium, uh, commercial purity, and on the bottom left corner, we have uh, melamine foam. Um, so we can easily visualize and compare these materials in terms of their strength and density. You can also visualize the uh, material categories. So if you click on show family envelopes, um, you can see the families of materials that are available here. And again, you can click and drag to uh, label these material families. So as you can see, we have metals and alloys here, fibers and particulates, non-technical ceramics, mineralized tissues, forms and so on. OK, so uh, very briefly of how you'd be able to create a visual chart. Um, and now let's move on to our um, material selection case study for a chassis. 